I'm scared. Also, sorry, I have to start by saying all the comments are in Italian. Oh, hey everyone, my name is Chucky Bartlow. This is an absolute jump scare of an opening, and I am recording this again because I filmed like 20 minutes of content but forgot to press record. That's what happens when you don't do this often enough. I keep checking that the red button is on. It is. So today's video is slightly different than normal, unless, of course, you've been to one of my live streams over on Twitch. Casual plug, just to let you know that that happens basically every single week. Is he an NPC? No, please tell me you're joking. That's mortifying. I spent ages like bowing to him. I just thought he was a dude who enjoyed like hanging out here. If you've not been there, this is a new setup where we could do a bit more of a reaction style video. If you've clicked on this video, you already know is the very famous ubiquitous Maltese song La Harbidui Futilasel, AKA the last farmer in the Valley of Honey. Now everybody who has ever been on a stage with a microphone in their hand in Malta has at some point sang this song. Now this one, I don't care how long ago it was it's an incredible song it's beautiful it's poignant and it's all about like the progress that's happening in the world especially in malta and how like things are advancing but like people are being left behind in the process a father who's like kids have gone to work in the big cities abandoning him for want of a better word in the fields this face you see here is nobody in particular it's from a music video of the original singer because we will be starting with the original singer in our ranking so what i have done is I have gone on YouTube and I have typed in Lachar Bidoui Fuitelasel and I have looked at the first 15 songs that come up and together we are going to be ranking this in a classic tier list ranking. So as you can see on this side, if I was a professional, I'd know where to point, all 15 of the artists are there. Now, if you are quick at counting, you'll notice there's 16 because the first image is of Sammy Bartlow, aka the first person to sing this. So we are going to listen to his version just to get a taste and then we'll rank the rest. So without any further ado, this video is obviously not an official video because it was a million years ago that the song was recorded. We should start by saying like it's very Anna sounding like the Maltese Anna. A combination of like modern singing with the Anna, it tells a story. That's all you need to know, really. It's the original, so I'm not going to say anything. We're going to start by being smart, and we're going to pop Sammy in S tier. I just want to say, before this goes any further, A, my hair is crazy. I'm growing it out, and it's wild. And B, just don't count, don't fight me. Don't, don't, I'm not insulting anyone. Don't fight me. I'm going to be listening to 15 versions of this song. Our first singer, as you can see there, come on now, is none other than the incredible Mary Fitzpatrick. Now, Kavi. At. I know she is a politically divisive figure, but please, for one second on this tiny island, let us put politics aside and appreciate the fact that this woman who sounds like if Angela Lansbury was raised in the Middle East is just like a 75-year-old, by the way, in this performance, 75-year-old, singing this song in a Mary Spiteria. Just let me have this. Let us have this. Oh, God. I take it back. <laughs> Let's cut him out. I hope I do it well, Paul. She says at a show with her fucking name everywhere, as though she's not one of the most beloved. Good on you, Mary. She hits her consonants. Also, why does she have... No, Paul. No, hold on. <laughs> why does she have two mics? What's happening? Oh, Mary. She got me high there. Shot. Sorry, I just have to say, I know that Mary... As you can see from the logo that's up there, Mary is usually considered a pretty, like... I don't know how else to say this, but it sounds funny to me that Mary sings so pepe. Like, how? Kin Stajun shot. Like that slimmer talk? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe those are fighting words. Again, 75, you can say what you want. 
that vibrato, that control at 75. You couldn't. You just couldn't. Now, Mary, I think we're going to put Mary A. I don't think she's quite at S. She didn't really change it much. She kind of just did a straightforward cover of the Sammy version, which is nice. I just don't think Mary did anything different with it. So we're going to we're gonna leave Mary at A. Right, we're moving on to the next person. I believe her name is Amber. I don't mean to sound shady, but um, she's not a person who I've heard of before. It's either a power pose or it's like one of those like Sims who've had their actions cancelled kind of pose. I'm not really sure where we're landing. Stage looks really empty. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bitch. Uh, apart from that, she is obviously already sounding a lot more modern, which <laughs> after Mary Spiteri and Sammy Bartolo is not that hard. If you're under 35 years old, you're going to sound a bit more modern, a bit younger. It's also her intonation. We, we love a cutaway to the pianist's hands every time. It's giving like Nightwish almost that run, but for me, it's interesting. It's getting very jazzy. If you're gonna modernize this song to me, there's something about a jazzy chill song that automatically fades into the background. No shade to like jazz artists. I think jazz is great, but there's something about this like very lo-fi chill beat that's just making it background. <laughs> So I said, oh, it's sounding a bit like Borg, and she said, Choreo! Choreo! And she's saying, like, I'm growing between the rocks, so I'm not really sure, like, Satar Minjol Blatt, I don't know what's happened, unless she's growing it herself. I thought she was going up. What was that? Choreo is too much. But uh, one thing we're going to notice is a lot of these are coming from competitions, either because they have to do a song in Maltese or because the entire competition is about Maltese singing. So when there's a competition element, there's also a big focus in Malta, especially on um, vocal prowess. It's not about like smaller technique. It's about like big belty sounds, which is why a lot of them will lose the original integrity of the song to try and like get this big sound. Like she's doing these like choreo power moves to a song about a farmer. <laughs> It's giving, it's not Nightwish, it's the other one. Within Temptation. I think this is like the 15th time I've referenced that video. Sorry, I was a fan of Vampire Diaries, all right? Even a yee hee hee. Amber is going... I'm gonna put her at B for now because I think she was great. I don't think she's Mary Spiteri great in terms of delivery. Obviously, vocally, I'm not gonna be like... Nit I'm not the honest vocal coach. Now, up next, I can see a familiar face. If you are a Eurovision watcher, let's hear Krish's version. Of course. Sorry, I just have to say, of course, Chris is doing it on Hot Talik. And, like, nothing exemplifies... The Maltese um, zeitgeist, like the Hatarik audience. Already a weird interpretation. Different, not weird. Chucky. For those who can't already tell, Chris has a very rock sound to his voice. That's kind of his thing. Is very gravelly. The double hand. <laughs> Three for three, cut away to the pianist's hands. We're like half, sorry, this isn't even Chris. I paused on, we're like halfway through and we've not even like gotten anywhere. And listen, as I said earlier, it's a chill song. So Mary sings it calmly, so does Sammy. It's very calm, but there's just something about the way they do it. It's telling a story. He's kind of getting through it. Listen to this. He wanted to go higher. He's just he's pacing or wasting time until he gets loud which he's obviously going to do because he always gets loud and to me it's like throwing away the beginning of the song which is nice um the difference like even amber she did the same thing she went huge but at least when she started she kind of felt what she was singing <laughs> Again, I have to say, like, sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should. 
this isn't even a competition like he's not competing he's there as like a guest singer so i'm not really sure why we are going to place chris i think ooh, see ooh, he's beloved i know but oh sorry we're moving on we're moving on here we go up next this one doesn't even have a video it's maria bellia actually hold on down here i think i've just seen hold on Okay, so it seems like she did it on the X Factor. I was gonna play a studio recording version, but it seems like she did it on the X Factor, so we'll just watch this one instead. With a judge we all know I have feelings about. Show me Era. How are you gonna pad the judges and not show me Era? I mean, if we're gonna talk fucking modern version, how's Miss London grammar over here? Twice. Can we pan to Era, please? Now I'm happy. Also, look how. Uh, let, look at the, di let's, let this, the, no, okay. Oh, Amber's here? This is how you get passionate and aggressive without, like, killing the vibe. Come on, share, Lloyd. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to drop her, it's good, but it's the same cadence as share, Lloyd. Oh, I just got chills. Amber, same. Amber had the exact same reaction as me. Amazing. Right, here's my stress. That was so good. It's definitely A. Is it an S? Are we giving it an, I think, original composition, the correct amount of passion? I think it's an S. She's getting an S. She's getting an S. It's our first S. Congratulations, Maria. You absolutely deserved it. Right, so we're continuing our journey with Carmen, another singer, I'm really sorry, who I don't know, a classic Maltese 480, 360 pixels uh, going on here. So let's hear what Carmen has to go. She came up. I didn't search for this. It was just one of the first 15 that came up. <laughs> instant instant close-up of fingers on a piano i could hear her sorry i'm sorry i heard her like de-spitting and not de spit you want to go in the mic excuse me i didn't need to hear that uh i did not need to hear that no thank you She's powering through it. She's like speeding it. She's like, nah, I got places to be, babes. There's a, a, a tombola that's happening in like half an hour. I gotta be at. Her voice both perfectly matches up with what she looks like and does not match at all. It's so interesting. She's very expressive. The guy in the background might be my ex maths teacher, and the hives I'm getting are real. Now, listen to her, listen, uh, honest vocal coach, listen to the power and the tone behind the word satar. There's a lot of voice there. It's not him, by the way. <laughs> You'll be happy to know it's not him. This set dressing, by the way. Fucking hell. Now, I think Carmen has a lovely voice. However, if we're going to be real and judge that as a cover, it wasn't the best. I'm going to have to put it down next to Chris in C tier. Ooh. I don't know what song I want to hear sing. It's a stretch, but she's given almost like Angoon vibe. <laughs> she's giving up. <laughs> Right up next, oh, this is gonna be a big one. I, um, I wish I had pre-heard these and made a decision before, but I haven't, so here we are. Up next, we've got Emma Muscat, who is famous for being famous. Uh, she also represented Malta in the Eurovision Song Contest. More on that some other time if you get me a couple of drinks. <laughs> I'm scared! Also, sorry, I have to start by saying all the comments are in Italian. COVID masks. Ooh. 
Let's start with the obvious. That is the longest sentence she's ever said in Maltese. I mean, she's hot. Like, we can't, we, we're not going to pretend she's not. She's gorgeous. That last note, is, I'm glad it was there. I've been trying to find a way to say it that doesn't sound mean. She's improved greatly, by the way, since the last time I've heard her sing live. She's definitely gotten better. So good on her from that front. However, that last note exemplifies that this song is just too big for her. Uh, and I'm trying to think of, like, how to rank it. We haven't finished, but I'm trying to think of how to rank it. It's also unfair because she has, like, a 25-piece orchestra, a massive stage, massive LEDs. She looks gorgeous. So can she compete against Carmen? Obviously, yes, she can because of all this. But is it a fair competition? Like, are they level? And that last note, she's not bad. I'm not saying she's bad. She managed the note. It's just the song is getting away from her because of its scope. Maybe it's just she needs a bit more consistency. See what I mean? Smaller voice, much better control, sounds so much nicer. So we are going to give her a ranking now. Oh, God, I can't put her name anywhere or the Italians will find me. Uh, she can go down here. Right, up next, another doozy. Up next, we're going to have Christabel, who is a person who I know. Uh, I don't know if we're friends anymore. We were sort of friendly at one point. I was invited to her wedding and I had a lovely time. But yeah, Christabel also represented Molten Eurovision Song Contest. Christabel has a very jazzy voice, I believe. Um, don't call this number. The, apart from the loud dinging, the percussion's almost a bit distracting in this cover. Yeah, she sounds nice. To me, it's just, there's nothing about it that makes me go, oh, I want to hear her version. I, I think we're going to put her here as well. No, no shade to her. In like, a, I'm doing a cover because I need to do a cover. Like We have like a 50 minute runtime. I've done five of my original shows. Let me do a cover. That That's kind of the vibe I got. So that's Christabel's. I'm sorry. There's a lot of sea tears. Maybe I'm a bitch. <laughs> Up next, we have Gaia. Now, Gaia is Malta's, probably Malta's first, like, child star, or one of Malta's first, like, child stars, who had the classic, like, she was a child star. She was beloved because she won the Junior Eurovision for us the first time. We all saw her, like, grow up, and now she's, gro like, she's grown up now. Very sweet girl. Love Gaia. People are being weird because they think of her as a child, even though I'm quite sure she's, like, 20 now. Leave her alone. But this cover seems to be from when she was a child again. So, the styling gives the same year she won like she looks almost exactly like she looked at the junior Eurovision so I'm guessing it's roughly around the same time she like really she has such amazing control at such a young age also I believe the performance we just saw of Christabel was like before the Eurovision and this is before Amber's Eurovision like there's a bit of a difference in venues and we know Christabel if she needed it she could have funded it Interesting. Very few people have managed this like middle. So most people at this point already start getting like, Wah! she knows that there's, listen, I, I haven't heard watched this, but I know she's going to go there, but she's given you an in-between one, which is nice. That's a very Gaia sound. Ma Sorry, I can't sing. It's interesting because to me, I'm stopping here just in case that changes. Early years, Gaia, the only thing you could really fault her was that she could oversing. Like, I know she has the talent, but she could oversing. She hasn't done that yet, which is like interesting, shocking, and amazing. So I pause it here because there's like a minute left. So it could all change. The only critique I was going to give her is that I wish her voice had some more depth to it. And then I remembered she's a child. There is no deeper for her voice to go. So we are going to put Gaia very firmly. Ooh. Let's put her A. I think Gaia deserves an A. But I think I think it's comparable to Miss Mary's. Mary will hate that. Now, up next. Oh, I can see the silky, 
see-through lace number of the reason this video is happening. But we're going to hear it together and we can understand why, to me, this is incredible. There's a lot of context to go through. Firstly, in case you haven't realized what I'm talking about, it's only fucking Ira Losco, right? Of course it is. With Gianluca. Now, sweet man, I'm sure. I think the Eurovision thing of him being the sweet one who smiles got a bit too far. They do two songs. They do La Harbidui. Thank God Ira does alone. And then Gianluca joins for Shemsh. And... <laughs> he smiled so much because he was called the smiley one. He doesn't say the words. So like, you know... It, it, so we're going to listen to her cover of La Harbidui, which... Listen... This, when I first heard this 10 years ago, firstly, the dress. People, when I tell you, lost their mind because they thought this woman was naked on stage. A, if she was, you should be so lucky. B, she obviously wasn't. But even, listen to, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, this is just gonna be like a fucking fan. But even the opening notes, listen to the cover, how they've changed how it sounds. Let's start. The opening two words. She has you in from the beginning. She has makeup. She is gorgeous. And there begins... <laughs> Sorry, I know. The analysis of why her version is so good. Ira, when she sings, she moans. But not in a creepy way. Shut the f*** up. In a very traditional Malty sound. Calling back to the Anna. This, like, undulation. This, like passionate cry from the soul there's a slight one that happens here and then every time she belts you'll hear it <laughs> the moan is there at the beginning heard that i'm gonna point every time the flip the flip she does at the end of every sentence It's it's the flip. Now she's not a farmer, right? I you, I can tell you that much. But she's selling the story. It's not even up for discussion. Here she goes, S tier. Above Maria, sorry, and above Sammy. You can't beat the original? Well, guess what? I'll listen to this version more often. I'm sorry, but I will. I will. I'm going to swap these two because that's random order, but there's like a caveat we need to cover here. <laughs> and after what I would consider the masterpiece of this video, we have... A, 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 point is, Claudio Baglione is a very famous Italian singer, and for some reason he covered this song. Hate. Remember earlier when I loved Eros' reinterpretation? I hate this one. Good pronunciation. He has a very unique voice, and to be honest, Maltese is a hard language. He's obviously just copying the sounds, not speaking the language, but like... This make why did he do this? Throwback to Emma when I said the song was too big for her. This is an even bigger sounding version because of the like wall of sound behind him. He's keeping up. This is what I mean. Obviously, he's like a super professional singer. <laughs> the fact that he doesn't know what he's singing kind of takes away some points. I'm going to put it in B tier because, like, he lost some of the words. His pronunciation was pretty good. And I think this last bridge is a really interesting take. Not bridge, this last, like, build up is a really interesting take on the song. So, up next, we have Justine. I believe Justine. She was in X Factor a couple of years ago. One of the top performers. I think she was top two or top three. <sighs> I feel bad. I really sound like I'm contradicting myself. She's too... <laughs> for me, like, she's overly feeling it. I feel like it's the beginning of the song still. It's also a TV competition show. I think it's like she only has like two minutes. I get it. She's putting it all in at the beginning. I just think she could have done the first two verses a bit calmer and then given us this, like, almost cry singing vibe. 
on a more positive, when I said I wanted Gaia, the child, I know it doesn't make sense. When I said I wanted more depth, now that's depth. They said Molta, fishing boat, even though the song is about farming. See, if she had been calm, sorry to interrupt her, if she had been calm at the start and then cut to this, it's a TV program, I would have appreciated it more. Okay, no, we have to hear that one again. That was so good. There's just something about that ooh. I know the build-up is good, but it's just... Mmm, depth. What's interesting is I said she was doing too much at the beginning, and I was like, oh, she's built up to this, and then she went more. Good on her. I I feel so cheeky. If I was her coach, I would want the... I'd want her to go up. Can I pitch it, you think? Let me try. I don't know. I feel like that would have been better. It's something about her lower voice. It's just a training thing. It's just very this. It's like when Miranda says, like... It's just thanks. Okay. That said... Let's rank her. Come on. Come on. She's an obvious A. She's an obvious A. Now, up next, um, we have a literal, probably the polar opposite to this. It's what's called a um, ensuite session. There's this Maltese performer. I know his name, but he doesn't have it anywhere on his public profile. So I'm not going to say his name. Um. Didn't expect him to start solo. Love how it's a real callback to the original with the guitar. Ciao. It's real haunting, I love it. It's a very cool sound. I don't want, like, um, it's obviously not the same, but it's like a Simon and Garfunkel. It's, like, different. Like, the low notes were, like, almost like Cat Stevens. And I, I just think he's so talented. It's a really interesting cover. Obviously, it is filmed in a toilet, so it's a bit hard for me to judge it on like oh replayability i wanna i wanna hear it over and over again i think we're gonna put it b we have three left up next we have georgina abella now georgina has been around for a while now this this is an 80s vibe it was probably filmed last year it's not like it's just the vibe oh the karaoke vibes of not knowing when to start oh yeah. I don't mean to sound rude when I say the word weirdly, but this is weirdly sexy. Like, not in, like, an I'm turned on. It's just, like, a a boudoir session. It's, the, like, I think it's the instrumentation, but also, like, her longing gaze and, like, her seductive voice. If we're gonna say that Mary is given Angela Lansbury, everyone makes some noise for Battle of Pone. This is a, it's the same change that, like, Claudio Baglione made. It's interesting. Right, we're going to have to give her a ranking. I feel bad because I do like her as a concept. <laughs> but we're going to put it It was good. It was just a bit forgettable. Oh, this feels bad, man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is... We're getting to the end. We're powering through. It's, I started filming so late, and it's now... It's freaking... Two in the morning. I started this so late. Here we go. We have two left, and up next we have Pamela Bedzina. Now, again, Pamela is a person who I love. Not as much as I love Ira, so let's all calm down. Feels like we're going to get a piano close-up of the fingers, which is exciting. It's a throwback. Here's the thing I love about Pamela as a singer. The choice she made there, I didn't really like. I think it was a weird choice to put the run there. An attempt at modernization, I'm not a big fan of. However, because she's so talented and she's so confident, she, it doesn't sound bad. I was just like, I guess I wish she hadn't done that. Oh, there they are. Found them. She also went loud and powerful on the part that no one else does. Usually they start on the key in such a shot. She waited. Also, the mics cannot handle the power of this woman's voice. They just blew up. 
Ah, I love Pamela. Uh, I just feel like th- the choices she made in the song weren't always the greatest. I think she tried to do too much and it wasn't on a big stage, it's a small stage. I am going to have to put her version down in the B list. If I'm being real, I love her. So that's why it's there. Being real, it's 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 very much the highest on the C list. Also, I didn't even show myself putting it there, but there it goes. Oh, there it goes. There we see it. And she's at the top of the C list. There we go. Right, we have come to our final video. And the reason, oh, there she is. The reason that I had to leave this one for the end is because Ceci and Chris, the people who you're about to see perform, are two of my very close friends. Ceci is my best friend in the entire world. Love her to bits. She's been on this channel approximately 25,000 years ago. Mm. And that aside, I need to clarify that bias. But when you hear this version of the song, I've been bugging. Ceci has a fucking Dido ass voice. She's got a beautiful, calming voice. It would sing anyone to sleep. She sings at weddings because it sounds so good in a church. She listen. She has that vibe. But I've been bullying this heifer for years to belt, and something clicked. And for some reason, in this song, she also went all out. So it's one of my favorite Maltese songs, my favorite Maltese person, and uh, she just just killed it. So this is a sister duet. This one I have heard many times. Right off the bat, you can see what I mean about how like her voice is like a very soft voice. They also have super tight harmonies, which you're gonna see throughout the whole thing. I've complained in the past about sounding a bit too soft or like losing it or being boring. This is like super soft, but super engaged. Even if you see how like Chris is, this is Chris, by the way, the other one was Ceci. Even if you see how she's like emoting while singing, she's clearly connecting with what's being said. She's clearly telling a story, obviously while performing and doing the harmonies and stuff, but they're, they're, they're locked in. <laughs> Again, depth, man. The depth of their voices. Ceci is the higher harmony. Chris is the lower one. So good. Chrissy's tone is so beautiful. The deeper voice. You can hear it throughout. Ceci's swap from the like soft, whispery, airy voice to still be in the higher harmony, but like in like a, a mix, a beautiful high chest mix. Mm. Quite sure they swapped who's doing the higher harmony there. The harmony swapping is giving that duo with the sexy hair, the long one. More than it's great because like they also swapped up the composition. If you watch the rest of their clips, you'll know that they would always do like their own version. So instead of just doing a cover, they'd like rewrite it from scratch in terms of the melody and the harmonies. Ceci played the guitar, like it was a whole process. So freaking good. We have our final ranking to give, and I think we all know, even if they weren't, my friends, bitch, it would be a sin to not put them as an S tier. That was an incredible performance. Right, so that is where we can end our video tonight. Here we have our final official ranking. Let me know if you agree or disagree with these rankings. Let me know if there's a cover I missed that you think is really good, or if there's another very, very popular song which everybody has covered that you would like me to do another tier ranking of. If you have enjoyed this content, please do consider subscribing. I occasionally remember this channel exists and I post semi-regularly for a while. I also stream on Twitch every single week for the most part, uh, where we play video games and we hang out and we have a good time. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I have been Chucky Bartlow. These are my social media links and I will see you all very, very soon. Mwah.